One of the common questions we hear from people deploying WVD for the first time is about the FSLogix Profile Container Technology. In this video, I'm going to tell you what the Profile Container Technology is all about, how to configure it, how to tell if it's working, and what to do in order to troubleshoot any problems if you detect that it's not working. My name is Vadim Vladimirsky, and I am the CEO of Nerdio. And if you're an MSP looking to build or grow your Azure practice, then this is the channel for you. There are actually four FSLogix technologies. There is the Profile Container, Office Container, App Masking, and Java Version Control. Office Container functionality and benefits are included in the Profile Container product. And in this video, we're going to focus specifically on the Profile Container. We'll talk about app masking and Java version control in future videos. The Profile Container is a way to redirect the user's profile to a VHD file stored on the file server instead of keeping it local. This allows for the user to connect to a different session host VM each day they log into their virtual desktop and still have access to all of their profile settings because those settings are not residing on the C drive, but are rather re redirected to a file share somewhere else. The way to configure the profile container is actually pretty simple. There is a single registry key where all of the configurations reside. You have to do two things to turn it on. You have to set the enable key to one to turn it on, and you have to provide a path to the location of a file share where the profile containers are going to be stored. Once you make these changes and reboot the computer, or remove the, reboot the VM and the session host, then every user that logs in will have the profile container created and stored on the file server. Now, how can you tell if a profile container is actually working? When a user logs into the virtual desktop, the FSLogix profile container technology is going to first connect to the file share where it expects to find the profile. And if a profile exists, it's going to mount it and, and connect it to the C users folder. To the operating system, it's going to look as if it's a local file, a local set of folders, but really it's going to be redirected to the file server or another file share. If that file doesn't exist on the file server, then the profile container technology will create a new VHD file and mount it under C users and redirect all of the writes to the file share. The way you can tell that it's working is by browsing to the C users folder. And what you'll see in there is if there is a folder called local underscore username and it has a recent modified date, that likely means that the profile container is working, meaning that it is redirecting the local profile to the file server. You can also look at the VHD file on the file server to make sure that it has a recent modified date. And if so, it's an indication that profile container is working as well. And then finally, if you have admin rights on the session host, you can open up the partition and disk management utility in Windows and you'll notice a virtual disk mounted, which is going to be that VHD file where the profile is stored. Now, important thing to keep in mind is that if there is already a local profile created for the user, when the user logs in, even with FSLogix profile container enabled, it is going to skip the mounting of a network-based profile and instead fall back to use the local profile. This can really be confusing sometimes because the user logs in and they may see their desktop and see everything working properly, but in reality, all of their changes are being saved locally. So if they were to log off and log back on to a different session host, they would not see any of the changes that they've made. So one registry setting that you can implement to avoid this type of problem is called delete local profile when a network profile should apply. And when you enable that particular registry setting and set it to one, then FSLogix is going to detect if there is an existing local profile already, delete that local profile, and connect the user to their network-based version. And that's really handy to make sure that the user always has all of their data retained. Another useful setting is to have FSLogix cause an error to come up on the screen rather than allow the user to continue working when the profile cannot be mapped. 
In this case, the user knows there is a problem and can you know, ask an administrator to resolve the issue rather than be under the impression that everything is working and then realize that their data may not have been saved. What are some of the things that you can do to troubleshoot a problem with profile containers not working as expected? Well, first of all, remember you gotta keep the file share accessible to the user. If for whatever reason the user cannot create and modify and delete files within the share where the registry setting is pointing for the FSLogix profile container, then that is not going to work. You have to make sure the user has access, both read and write access to that uh, file share on the file server or in Azure files or something like that. Then you also have to make sure that either you don't have any local profiles or you have the registry setting set to delete a local profile if one exists. There are also a handful of local security groups on each session host where FSLogix profile container technology is installed and those control which users have the profile container enabled and which do not. So if your user is not getting the profile created or is not connecting to an existing profile, make sure that that user is not excluded from having FSLogix enabled via one of those local security groups. Finally, if you verified everything else and are still having trouble mounting the FSLogix profile container for a particular user, take a look on the file server where the file share resides make sure that there is not an open file lock on the VHD file. And that could happen if you have multiple session hosts and the user has an active session or a disconnected session on another session host that's keeping that profile file lock open. If that's the case, be sure to log off the user from the other session host or disconnect that or close that file handler from the file server. Nerdio pre-configures FSLogix with some of the best practices to make sure that it works reliably in a user environment. Some of the examples of the settings that we configure is setting up a file share in the file server, enabling FSLogix and pointing it via registry on the golden image template to that location on the file server. We also by default implement the delete local profile key when a network profile should be used that prevents users with local profiles from having their data not stored on the file server. We also configure to exclude documents and desktop items from the VHD file and redirect it to another location on the file server through group policy. This really allows the size of the profile to remain smaller and more manageable and gives the administrator the ability to easier backup and manage users' personal data. To learn more about the FSLogix profile container, please click on the link below to view an article in the Nerdio Academy.